Chapter Four, Homework. Question number one. This is about how to read the phase diagram. In the phase diagram, there's a triple point where three phases can exist at the same time. There are three phase boundaries. One, two, three. Any point along phase boundary can have two phases exist at the same time. At a low temperature, high pressure, solid phase is the most stable phase. At a high temperature, low pressure, gas phase is the most stable phase. In between, it's the liquid phase. If the sample initially at one atmosphere, 273 Kelvin, that is this point. Okay, that's the initial point. And this is in the gas phase region. So initially, the sample is a gas. If it's subject to isobaric constant pressure heating, okay, constant pressure heating is the horizontal line. Temperature goes up to 300 Kelvin, and this point is still in the gas phase region. So the, the gas system is still a gas. Subject, if under isothermal compression, okay, isothermal compression, so pressure uh, increase, uh, it's a vertical line uh, to 70 atmosphere, so 70 is somewhere here, and that enters the liquid region. The sample is a liquid now. Next, isobaric cooling to 210. Isobaric cooling temperature goes down. It's horizontal, go to the left. To 210. 210 is somewhere here. And that gives you this point. Enters the solid uh, region. And so the sample now solidify into a solid after cooling to 210. Next, isothermal decompression. Isothermal means temperature is constant. That's vertical line. Decompression means pressure goes down. So it, it vertically goes down to one atmosphere. And so one atmosphere here. And so that's the point. And this is just entering the uh, gas phase region. So the sample vaporize, the solid vaporize after decompression. Okay, next, isobaric heating to 270K. So isobaric means constant pressure heating, and that's horizontal, uh, goes to 273. And that goes back to the initial point. The system has resumed its initial condition in the gas phase state. Question number two, state and justify the thermodynamic criterion for solution vapor equilibrium. In class, we already established the thermodynamic criteria for two phases that are in equilibrium, and that is the chemical potential of the two phases must be the same. Here, let's very briefly uh, go over the justification. At the equilibrium under constant temperature, constant pressure, the second law says the delta G should be zero. Gibbs energy should not change. Suppose we have two phases. Here, in this case, it's one is the solution, one is the vapor phase. Okay, Beta is the liquid, alpha is the vapor phase. If the phase, two phases in equilibrium, there's no uh, natural direction, okay. But at any instant, there may be a change from either beta to alpha or alpha to beta. So let's assume there's a change, a small change from beta to alpha. Okay, let's see how much Gibbs energy change. For alpha phase, uh, the number of, number of moles increase the n. So the Gibbs energy increase should be the chemical potential times number of moles. Chemical potential is the molar Gibbs energy times number of moles change that give you the Gibbs energy change. Similarly, the beta phase, in this case is a liquid, should decrease by mu b times dn. 
So the total Gibbs energy change should be mu alpha dn, that's the vapor phase increase, minus Gibbs energy in liquid decrease. In order to obey the second law, this change should be zero. And for this to be zero, dn is the same, then the chemical potential has to be the same. So in order to uh, obey the second law, delta g equals zero, the chemical potential must be the same so that there's no Gibbs energy change, even if there is the number of moles change, either from alpha to beta or from beta to alpha. Question number three. Using classic Clapeyron equation to explain why vapor pressure of liquid increase with temperature. Okay, liquid vapor pressure uh, change with uh, temperature refers to this phase boundary. Okay, why this goes the this phase boundary goes up instead of going down. It goes up. Okay, why is that? Okay, so let's start with this uh, Clapeyron equation. This Clapeyron equation, dp dt, is the derivative of pressure versus temperature, and that means the slope of this phase boundary. That's the slope of the phase boundary, and um, this phase boundary uh, slope is delta s over delta v. Delta s is the phase transition entropy. Delta v is the phase transition volume change. So here, the phase transition is between liquid to vapor phase. From liquid to vapor phase, we know the volume increase a lot. So it's positive. The volume increase. Delta v is positive. Similarly, when liquid becomes vapor phase, the system becomes more disordered, so the entropy increase. It's a positive number. So two positive numbers divided by each other, that give you a positive number. In other words, the slope should be a positive number. If the slope is positive, that means the curve goes up. That justify why uh, vapor pressure increase with temperature. Now next explain what happens to the vapor pressure when a liquid starts to boil. Okay, in class we show that uh, the vapor the liquid start to boil when its own vapor pressure equals the pressure of the outside uh, surrounding pressure. So the vapor pressure reach outside pressure. For example, water vapor pressure is very low at room temperature, but the increased temperature vapor pressure will increase until it becomes one atmosphere. And that's when it starts to boil. For water, it's 100 degree. Question number four. Estimate the change of boiling point of a liquid when pressure is increased by 0.1 atmosphere. So on the phase uh, diagram, we have three boundaries, okay, solid, vapor phase, and the liquid phase. So we are talking about this phase boundary, liquid and the vapor phase boundary. And suppose we start with a point here. And if the pressure increase uh, 0 0.1, so here is 0 0.1 atmosphere, the question is what about the temperature change? Okay, we know the uh, phase boundary is described by Clapeyron equation, dp dt. Now, dp dt is the slope at any point. Okay, so 
from this slope, okay, we can write d, instead of dp dt, we can write dt dp. Okay, so because we want to calculate dt, we know dp. And um, this is uh, the slope at any instant. If we want to estimate the change, we can assume this is a, the slope is a constant, but this is approximate. So we approximate if temperature pressure doesn't change too much. Okay, then you can think about as a uh, straight line. So delta T would equal to the slope times delta P. And here uh, we know that delta S, the entropy of the phase transition should equal to 85 Charlton's rule. And delta V is liquid becomes uh, the gas phase. And um, if uh, the gas phase obeys ideal gas law, uh, at room temperature, the volume should approximately 20, uh, 24 to 25 uh, cubic decimeter per mole. All right, so that's ideal gas. So plug in to the equation. So delta V goes here, delta S goes to here, delta P is 0 0.1 atmosphere. So plug in everything, the delta T approximately 2.98 Kelvin. All right, so if pressure increase 0 0.1, temperature will increase about 2.98 Kelvin for boiling point. Question number five. The vapor pressure of a substance is uh, at 20 degree is 58 kilopascal, and its vape enthalpy of vaporization is 32.7 kilojoule per mole. Estimate the temperature at which its vapor pressure is 66 kilopascal. Okay, compared to the last question, where you know the pressure change, you want to calculate the temperature change. We use the Clapeyron equation to estimate the change. Here, we ask you to calculate exactly what is the temperature instead of change. What is the temperature when the vapor pressure is given? Okay. To calculate this type of question, we use Classis Clapeyron equation. In this equation, we have T1, P1, T2, P2. Okay. So first, we need to assign what is T1, P1, what is T2, P2. So we know at 20 degree, the pressure is 58, the vapor pressure 58. So here we can assign this is T1 and this is P1. Okay, at this temperature, the pressure is 58. And we want to calculate the temperature where this is T2. We want to calculate the T2 at which the pressure is P2. 66, so 66 kilopascal is a P2. We, can, we want to calculate T2. So this is what we want to calculate. And therefore, we, first we need to modify this equation. 1 over T2 equals 1 over T1 plus R over delta H. Now delta H is the vaporization enthalpy. Here is 32.7 kilojoule. All right, you need to change to joule. So you times 1000 give you joule. All right, and so 1 over T2 can be calculated, and therefore T2 can be calculated. It's 296 kilojoule or Kelvin, nine, or 23 Celsius. At this temperature, the vapor pressure is 66 uh, kilopascal at uh, 23 Celsius. The question also asks you, how do you make this substance boil? At 23 uh, Celsius, does this liquid boil? Well, because the pressure is 66, the, this is the vapor pressure. And um, if the external pressure is one atmosphere, so one atmosphere is about 101 kilopascal, okay, 100 kilopascal. So the vapor pressure of this liquid at 23 Celsius is 66 kilopascal, much lower than outside pressure. And therefore, this liquid does not boil at this temperature. To make this liquid boil, one way to do it is to heat it 
until the vapor pressure increases to one atmosphere. The other way, if you want to keep the temperature, let it boil, then you need to reduce the pressure. So the answer in this case is to reduce the outside pressure to 66, okay, to 66 kilopascal, so that the vapor pressure equals outside pressure, and that's when it starts to boil. Question number six, <clears throat> the boiling point of hexane is 69 Celsius. Estimate its enthalpy of vaporization using Chalton's rule and its vapor pressure at 25 degree. Compared to the last question where you have a temperature, you have a vapor pressure, you want to calculate temperature. Here you have a temperature you want to calculate the vapor pressure. So again, you use the classes Clapeyron equation, but in the equation, you need the delta H, the enthalpy of vaporization. So first calculate, find out the enthalpy of vaporization using Charlton's rule. Charlton's rule says delta S is 85, but delta S should equal to delta H over T, and therefore delta H can be calculated by T times 85 and the temperature of a phase transition is 69 Celsius. And therefore, <clears throat> you should use 85 times the temperature. Okay, so the temperature in Kelvin, which is uh, 30, uh, 342.2, and that gives you 29.1 kilojoule per mole delta H. And now, uh, apply uh, classes Clapeyron equation. We want to calculate the vapor pressure. So if this uh, P2 is the one we, we want to calculate, then T2 will be 25 degree. Okay, you need to change to uh, Kelvin T2. And what is T1 P1? Okay, we know uh, the boiling point uh, of hexane is 69. And usually when we see say boiling point, it's the normal boiling point, means that the pressure is one atmosphere. And therefore, uh, P1 is one atmosphere, and the T1 is 69. So we know T1 boiling point, P1 one atmosphere, and uh, uh, what will be the vapor pressure if T2 is 25? Okay, room temperature. Okay, without the calculation, you know at low temperature, the vapor pressure should uh, be lower. Uh, uh, so it must be lower than one atmosphere. So let's calculate P2. <clears throat> so the P2 calculate to be 0 0.22 atmosphere instead of one atmosphere. So one atmosphere at 69 degree and uh, 0.22 atmosphere at a 25 degree. 